All right, this is an integral that actually came from a volume integral where we were integrating by disks in the variable y. And I'll post a link to that in the video. And we now have the tools to do it. When I see an inverse sine function inside of an integral, I think to myself, the way to simplify this thing is to do a trig substitution where that variable y is the sine of some angle. So the inverse sine and the sine will undo each other, hopefully giving us an integral that's easier to comprehend. So I'm going to say let y equal the sine of some angle theta. I do have to transform the differential over here. So dy is the derivative of this d theta. So it's cosine theta d theta. At the same time, I need to take care of my limits of integration. So I'm going to abandon y altogether and just do a theta integral. So when y is equal to 0, I can look at my definition of y up here. It's the sine of theta. And I would just ask what theta makes y equal to 0. And that's theta equals 0. If you want to be more formal about it, I'll do that for the upper limit. I can say when y is 1, 1 is equal to the sine of theta. That means theta is the angle whose sine is 1, and that is pi over 2. All right, so I've now transformed this integral into a theta integral that goes from 0 to pi over 2. I'm going to pull the factor of pi out in front. And then I have the, the inverse sine of the sine of theta, which is just theta, but it's squared. So there's that. And then dy is cosine theta d theta. And now I recognize this as a classic integration by parts integral. I have a piece over here that gets simpler if I differentiate it. I have a piece over here that's easy to guess the antiderivative of. And so I'm going to say let u equal theta squared. Then du is going to be 2 theta d theta. Let dv equal cosine theta d theta. Oops. And that means v is the sine of theta. And now I can transform this integral with the first iteration of integration by parts. I can tell it's going to take another iteration to, to get this thing knocked all the way down to a constant. I have pi out in front of the whole thing. And then I end up with u times v, so that's theta squared sine theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 2 minus the integral of v du, and that's sine theta times 2 theta d theta. I'm going to move the 2 out in front. So I end up with the integral of theta sine theta d theta as theta goes from 0 to pi over 2. All right, so this is progress because I've knocked down my theta squared to a theta. And with one more iteration of integration by parts, that'll be knocked down to a constant. So I've got my pi out in front. And then I have to evaluate across the limits here with my theta squared sine theta. So if I plug in the upper limit, that gives me a pi squared over 4 multiplied by the sine of pi over 2, which is 1. So pi squared over 4. And then the lower limit vanishes because theta is 0. So theta squared is 0, and sine of theta is also 0. And then I have minus 2 times this integral, which is going to require more integration by parts. So I'm going to go let u be theta. Then du is d theta. Let dv be sine theta d theta. And v is going to be negative cosine theta, the thing I differentiate to get positive sine. And I can rewrite my integral again. So I have a pi out in front, constant here that's a spectator now, a 2 out in front of what I get when I integrate. So then I'm going to put in uv, that's negative theta cosine theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 2 minus the integral of v du. v is carrying a minus sign, and I'm going to factor that out as I write this down. 
I'm starting to have a lot of nested parentheses here. You got to be careful. All right, just writing down all my spectators again. And I'll make progress on evaluating this term across the limits, 0 to pi over 2. When I plug in the upper limit, I get 0 because the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Then I subtract what I get when I plug in the lower limit, which is also 0 because theta is 0 out in front. So this whole thing vanishes. It's kind of relieving, honestly. Then I look at my integral here, the integral of cosine. It's just sine theta. Evaluate it from 0 to pi over 2. And so I have pi times pi squared over 4 minus, uh, I guess I'll write the 2 there. And when I plug in the upper limit, I get 1. Lower limit gives me 0. So minus 2 times 1. Okay. And maybe I could clean it up by distributing the pi. So I have pi cubed over 4 minus 2 pi. 